Consider this problem. A ball is thrown downward with an initial speed of 20 feet per second from an 800 foot cliff. And we're given the acceleration due to gravity. Write a function for a of t, that is the acceleration with respect to time. Now the acceleration due to gravity, it's a fixed number. And so a of t is simply equal to negative 32. It doesn't depend on time. It's always the same. Now let's move on to part b. What is the velocity of the ball at t equals zero? Well, if we draw a picture, let's say this is the building. And here's the ball. The ball is not released from rest. It's thrown down with an initial speed of 20 feet per second. So we could say that v0 is what? v0 is negative 20, not positive 20. The speed of the ball is positive 20, but the velocity is negative 20 because velocity is dependent on direction. The ball is going in a negative y direction, so that's why it has to be negative. So that's the answer for part b. v of 0 is negative 20. Now what about part c? Write a function for v of t. What we need to do is we need to integrate this function. So the antiderivative of a of t dt, that's going to equal the antiderivative of negative 32 with respect to time. Now you need to know that the antiderivative of the acceleration function will give you the velocity function. And now we need to find the indefinite integral of negative 32. So that's going to be negative 32t plus some constant c. Now we need to use the initial condition to find the value of c. So let's replace t with 0. v of 0 is negative 20. Negative 32 times 0 is 0. So we can see that c is negative 20. So the velocity function is going to be negative 32 t. We have this part. All we need to do is replace c with negative 20. So that's the velocity function. We no longer need the acceleration function. What is the speed of the ball at t equal 4 for part d? Well, first, we need to evaluate v of 4. So that's going to be negative 32 times 4 minus 20. Now, 30 times 4 is 120 because 3 times 4 is 12. And 2 times 4 is 8. So 32 times 4 is 128 minus 120. That's equal to negative 148. Now, what does this number represent? It's negative 148 feet per second. V of t gives you the velocity of the function. Remember, the ball is going down, so the velocity is negative. But the speed is always positive. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. So the speed at t equals 4 is going to be the absolute value of V of 4. And so that's going to be positive 148 feet per second. So this is the answer for part D, because we're looking for the speed and not the velocity. Now let's move on to part E. What is the value of S of 0? So what is the position of the ball at t equals 0? Now if you recall, the ball was thrown downward from an 800 foot cliff. So the initial position of the ball Keep in mind, s of t represents the position function, is 800 feet. The ball was 800 feet above ground level at the beginning of this problem. So we could say that s of 0 is 800 feet. So now let's move on to part f. Calculate the distance traveled and the displacement of the ball in the first five seconds using v of t. The displacement is basically the difference between the position 
of one point and the position of another. So the displacement is the final position minus the initial position, which is basically SB minus SA. Now, it's important to understand that the position function is the antiderivative of the velocity function. So if you want to write the position function, you need to find the indefinite integral of v of t dt. Now, if you want to find displacement, you need to evaluate the definite integral of v of t dt from a to b. So this will give you s of t evaluated from a to b, which is the same as s of b minus s of a. And that will give you the displacement of the ball. Now, distance and displacement will be the same if the ball travels in one direction. In this case, it's not changing direction. It's falling down straight. So the distance and displacement will have the same magnitude. However, they will not have the same sign. As the ball falls downward in the negative y direction, displacement, like velocity, they're vectors, so they can be negative. Distance and speed will be positive. So let's say if the displacement was negative 200 meters. The distance will be positive 200 meters. The only time these two will vary in terms of magnitude is if the direction changes. For example, let's say if we travel 5 feet to the right and then 8 feet to the left. The total distance traveled is 5 plus 8. That's 13. But the displacement is 5 plus negative 8, which is negative 3. This is negative because it's going to the left. This is positive because it's going to the right. So the displacement will be negative 3 because the net change is negative 3 to the left. If you go from the initial position to the final position, you traveled a net of 3 feet to the left. So that's the displacement. But the total distance you actually traveled is 5 plus 8 or 13. Now let's go ahead and calculate the displacement. So it's going to be the definite integral of the velocity function from a to b. And so it's for the first 5 seconds, that's from 0 to 5. And the velocity function is negative 32t minus 20. So that's going to be negative 32t squared divided by 2 minus 20t evaluated from 0 to 5. Now, negative 32 divided by 2 is negative 16. So s of 5 is going to be negative 16 times 5 squared minus 20 times 5. Now, typically, there would be a constant c, but we really don't have to worry about it if you're evaluating a definite integral. So with the constant c, that would become s of 5. But we're not going to worry about the constant since it's going to cancel. And then minus... Now we need to plug in 0, so that's going to be negative 16 times 0 squared minus 20 times 0. Now, 5 squared is 25, and 25 times 16, that's 400. So we have negative 400, and 20 times 5 is 100. And then everything here is 0. So negative 400 minus 100 is negative 500. So this is the displacement. The ball went down 500 feet in the first 5 seconds. Now the distance is positive 500 feet, but the displacement is the negative 500 feet. Distance and displacement will have the same magnitude if the ball travels in one direction and if it doesn't change direction. Now let's move on to part G. Write a function for S of T the position function of the ball with respect to the ground in the y direction. So what we need to do is find the antiderivative of v of t. The antiderivative of v of t, that is the velocity function, will give us the position function. So it's going to be negative 32t squared over 2, which we know it's negative 16t squared, minus 20t plus some constant c. 
Now, we need to find the value of this constant. And you can see it right here. It's 800. If you replace t with 0, this is going to be negative 16 times 0 squared minus 20 times 0 plus c. s of 0 is 800. And 0 squared, 20 times 0, that's all 0. So we can see that c is 800. So therefore, the position function, s of t, is going to be negative 16t squared minus 20t plus 800. And so this is the answer for part g. Part H, how long will it take for the ball to hit the ground? Well, let's find out. So the ball will hit the ground when the position function is equal to 0. And we're asking how long, so we're talking about time. So we need to find the value of t when s is 0. So let's replace s of t with 0. And let's solve for t. Now first, let's simplify this function. So we can divide everything by negative 4. We're going to have to use the quadratic equation to calculate the value of t. Negative 16 divided by negative 4 is positive 4. Negative 20 divided by negative 4 is positive 5. And 800 divided by negative 4, let's uh, see what that's going to be. So that's uh, negative 200. And so now, let's use the quadratic formula. So t is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So in this example, a is 4, b is 5, c is negative 200. We have the quadratic equation already in standard form. So this is going to be negative 5 plus or minus b squared, which is 5 squared, so that's 25, minus 4 times a times c. And 2 times a, that's going to be 2 times uh, 4, which is 8. Now, 25 minus 4 times 4 times negative 200, that's going to be positive 3,225. So let's take the square root of that number. So that becomes 56.79 divided by 8. Now we have two possible answers, plus or minus. If we use the minus sign, we're going to get a negative answer for t, so we don't want that. Let's use the positive sign. So t is going to be negative 5 plus 56.79 divided by 8. So you should get 6.47 seconds. So that's how long it's going to take approximately for the ball to hit the ground. So if you plug this in to S of T, you should get approximately 0. Let's see. Negative 16 times 6.47 squared minus 20 times 6.47 plus 800. I got 0.8256, which is close to 0, but keep in mind, this is a routed answer. It was really like 6.473 something. And this also is a rounded value. So just keep that in mind. If you use the exact answer, this is going to equal 0. Now, let's move on. What is the speed of the ball just before it hits the ground? Now, we know that speed is the absolute value of velocity. And we have the time it takes just before it hits the ground. Now, I'm going to use a more accurate answer, which is going to be 6.4738. If you take that answer and plug it into this, you should get a number like negative 0.037, which is very close to zero. 
So let's plug it into this expression. So we have the absolute value of negative 32 times 6.4738 minus 20. And so that's going to be negative 227.2. And the final answer is going to be positive 227.2. And that's around the answer. And that's feet per second. So that's how fast the ball is moving just before it hits the ground. And so that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good understanding of calculus along with some physics problems like position, function, and uh, velocity functions and acceleration functions.